What is tech entrepreneurship? It is the any business or venture that is enabled by tech or uses technology to distribute or continue its business. This is something like Facebook, Instagram, Amazon, iOS Tito, and you know the apps that you use every day. So the topic is it appears easy, it's really hard, and why we should start now. Let me tell you about my story. Five years ago, I did something called Spell Dyer. He, he, um, if you, who here knows the Jollibee delivery number? Raise, raise your hand. Come on. One. What? Very good. That's in Manila. Here in Cebu, what's the number? Uh, okay, maybe one or two. How about the McDonald's delivery number? One. Very good. The rest don't know. Yet you see these billboards everywhere. You see them in television. You see them flyers. You see all these things. And yet, you don't remember the most important information in those ads. You spend millions on those things. And yet, you don't remember? Why? Simple. It's because we as humans are not wired to remember numbers. We're wired to remember people and organizations by their names. Right? Yes, yes. I don't remember. Well, so, so we made Spell Dial. Spell Dial is an application that lets you dial names instead of numbers. That's all we did. And so it looks like that. This was about five years ago. And we appeared in the news, we appeared in television, we were appeared in the newspapers. I was fresh out of college in a team of people. We were just so excited. We were definitely going to change the world. We were going to look something like this. Ta-da! We're going to be the next billionaire. Seriously, I thought I was going to be... I, my dream was to be a billionaire by 24 years old. A dollar billionaire. I'm not kidding. So these guys, they're valued a billion dollars, 41 billion dollars, 50,000 dollars per day, Flappy Bird. WhatsApp was bought for 19 billion dollars. It's like more than or almost a trillion pesos. Wow. Goodbye our country. Snapchat. Spell dial was definitely going to be very big and world changing. This is what happened. Expectation? Reality. <laughs> within a year, I had, maybe within two years, I had run out of money and we tried really hard and we weren't able to succeed. And there were several things that I had to learn and also unlearn. And I'm going to share them with you right now. Number one, and I'm going to encourage you guys. Number one is, what's this? This is a skydiver. He's a thrill seeker, you know? Number one thing that I learned was we had to face our fear of failure. And this statement summarizes it very well. Let me ask you a question. Maybe close your eyes. I actually saw this in a TED talk. Close your eyes. Right now. Okay, close your eyes. And then the question is, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Think about it. If you could not fail, like for serious, you will not fail, what would you do? And I asked myself this question, you can open your eyes. I asked this question myself and so I, I was kind of scared because, wow, like my, my dreams, like, ah, I'll, I'll go to another planet. I'll go like, you know, I'll, I'll build a spaceship. I'll build, I'll go to, to another galaxy. I'll, I'll build like a warp speed device. And suddenly everything seemed possible because, you know, the premise was I could not fail. But suddenly we realized that our dreams and the, we realized how much we limit ourselves just because we're afraid of failing. We should address that. Let's be a generation of thrill seekers. I'm gonna talk about what I thought I saw in myself and I also see in Filipinos around me, of the things that we have to learn and unlearn in order for us to succeed. And the number one thing is we have to be less afraid of failing. Right now we are so afraid of failing that in fact, we don't even try. We try less because it's so disappointing. If you try hard, then you don't succeed. It's less embarrassing if you don't try so much. At least you could say, ah, I didn't try so hard, I really didn't want it. Or it's even worse is because we even spread it around. Have you ever heard the word nanny? Yes. Yeah, it's like you see somebody trying really hard to succeed, and you go, oh, nanny. <laughs> As if it's wrong. It's like, when did trying hard become wrong and uncool? Here in the Philippines. It's like you see somebody studying and you go, Come on, naning kaita. In English, 
you're so trying hard. I mean, in other countries, you would be like, yes, come on, keep trying, you can do it. In the Philippines, what? Chill, man. Chill, I'm good. I mean, it's funny, but it's weird, isn't it? It's like, it's like being ambitious is now becoming ambitioso, which has a very negative connotation here when it's supposed to be very good. It's like, try hard, be nanny. <laughs> The truth of the matter is, we have to try hard because if you don't try hard, you're definitely going to fail. People try hard and yet fail, and that is okay. We've stopped asking the question, what do you want to achieve? If you know what you want to achieve, work hard at it and be willing to fail along the way because it, you will fail along the way. And it's okay, it doesn't matter because you will get to where you need to be. And the failures are the stepping stones not the blocks and the hindrances that will forever haunt you. We're so afraid of failing. We have to unlearn that. Let's be a generation of thrill seekers, the nanny generation. <laughs> Second thing I learned is, I, I learned this because I talked to a friend who came over from the US and he told me like, you know what Albert, in the States, or at least some parts in the States, the way they teach and the way they educate people is so different from the Philippines. I'm like, really? Like, yeah, in engineering, it's so different. Like, we're, really? Why? And he told me this, and I was like, what? For example, in the Philippines, this is what happens. Imagine you go to class, and the professor walks in, and he brings in, what's this? A Rubik's Cube, very good. He brings in a Rubik's Cube, and he says, all right, class, this is a Rubik's Cube. The objective of this is to Get the cube into like all colors of the same color on the same side by twisting and turning it. Alright, that's the objective. Understand? Yes. Very good, students. So then, these are the steps. Take notes. This is the before. The first thing you do is that, and then that, and then that, and then that, not yet that, and then that. Why are you not taking notes? Take notes. And then that, and then that. Alright, and you have the cross at the top. It should be green. And then, okay, then you have one side, very good, and you have like that semi, semi little T there, like Ted, you know? <laughs> All right, and then you invert the T so it's not Ted anymore, but, you know, just imagination. And then you turn, 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 turn. What's so funny? Wanna go out? All right, and then when you do that, finally you have the X in the Ted X over there. And then, voila! Did you take notes? Yes. All right, take notes, okay? Study your notes tomorrow, we'll hand up an exam, and you will have to answer the steps on how to solve Ruby's you. <laughs> that's exactly how we learn in the Philippines. That's how we learn engineering, that's almost how we learn everything. I look at my sister, and she studies um, nursing, and she memorizes everything. She like highlights everything, everything in the book. Why are you highlighting everything? Because like, I have to remember this. I was like, but that's everything. Yeah, that's what I have to remember, everything. <laughs> but this is true. Uh, guilty other people here, which is great, you know? She was nanny. <laughs> I love my sister. In the States, the professor, in the, in the US or in other parts of the world, the professor walks in with a Rubik's Cube into the class and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Rubik's Cube. What is it? Rubik's Cube. Very good. You listen well. Now, the objective of this cube is to get it from any part, uh, from its current state, to a state where all the colors that are the same are on the same side. Understand? Yes. All right. Now, everyone, I will give to you each a Rubik's Cube. Catch, catch. All right. Everyone gives, gets a Rubik's Cube. Yes. Go home. Your assignment is by tomorrow. Submit your own algorithm that will take the cube from any state to a state where it is complete. Dismissed. And the Filipinos go, what? Where's the part where you teach us? So I know the Filipinos' brain are like, kuh, kuh. That's not education. So now we buy the tuition. In English, what do I pay my tuition for? The teacher don't teach. And we're entitled to complain. 
we feel like we have a right to be spoon-fed and to be taught every single thing. Right? Because the teachers try to teach us how to learn, how to solve problems on our own, and we complain! Complain to the dean's office! This teacher doesn't teach, only gives us problems. <laughs> Expects us to learn on our own? What do we pay the school for? That's okay if you want to become a technician for your life where you follow a manual. Where your problem always looks like this. Memorize the, step, the steps. But what if the problem becomes like this? Uh-oh. What am I going to do school? <laughs> In English, the school did not teach us that. Bad school, I will not send my children there. <laughs> what if the problems got even a little bit more creative? <laughs> Suddenly he's like, whoa, that's like PhD degree. <laughs> they teach that to you for sure in PhD. Truth of the matter, guys, the, the world is filled with problems and the problems are not taught in school. We have to learn how to learn on our own. We have to become problem solvers or we solve problems on our own. Let's be a generation of problem solvers. Another generation of spoon-fed people. Solve problems. Let's be a generation of thrill seekers. Let's be a generation of problem solvers. And third, I want to talk about Today, this age, we have access to computing resources like never before. Seriously, this is like an internet cafe, it's like 10 pesos per hour. Five years ago, I did my freelance business, I made websites and stuff in an internet cafe. I had everything in my USB, my Photoshop. Uh, it was later on I bought the license. Um, <laughs> uh, Photoshop, and everything I needed to do my business, I put it there. All right? And now you can even go to, if you are very creative and you go off peak hours, you can even find, find five peso in rent cafes per hour. If you also don't mind about the armpit smell. <laughs> you can. And it's become so cheap, so cheaper than before. So there is literally no excuse for you to do a tech business. Let's be a generation of thrill seekers, problem solvers. And now that we have access to computer resources, I think we have a chance at this. It's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be in a year or two or three or four maybe, but we have a chance. A chance like never before. Not just like them, but different maybe. Instead of, like, you know, like them, it'll be our version. But now we have a chance. These are currently our players right now. There's no big winners yet, out of players. Which reminds me of a story of a guy I met from Silicon Valley and his name is Jojo Flores and he actually came here and he has like a facility in Silicon Valley where all these startups came from that he has helped the, the likes of like Dropbox and so many other startups like 500 and not yet not one Filipino there he said and in this building where they help startups he said he had met the president of Estonia do you guys know Estonia? Yeah. it's a country in Europe right? So, he met the president of Estonia, and the reason for that is because the president had flown over to like officiate the ribbon cutting for the ribbon cutting ceremony in the <laughs> corner of their pavilion for a section for startups for Estonia or like tech business from Estonia. And then he asked this guy, like this president, sorry, guy, president. He asked this president, Mr. President, you know, I have a question. I'm very curious. Like, you're the president. You know, most countries they send over like a diplomat or an envoy or a consul or an ambassador. But you, why you, you're the president, why did you fly all over, all the way here to, to cut the ribbon for this? And he said, George, you know what, George, do you know Skype? Do you know Skype? Do you know Skype? Skype is from Estonia. And because of Skype, they employ 2,000 jobs in Estonia. Simply put, I want more Skypes to come out of Estonia. Guys in the Philippines, we need jobs, but really, we need more job creators. And one of the easiest, not, it's not easy, but one of the easiest comparatively ways to create more jobs is using technology because they make everything so easy. Try to start a restaurant, you need like lots of investment. When you do a tech business, you can go to the internet cafe. You'll still spend money, it'll still be very hard, but it's easier than putting up a lot of money. In tech club. Start now. 
So as you go home today, and you're gonna look around, like you know, you're gonna see, you're gonna see everything around you. You're gonna see the smoke. You're gonna see the buildings around you, and you're gonna use technology and the businesses and everything. I want you to think about something. Just think about how much better or how much more uh, better we could make our world around us or the Philippines, our country, better. If you took your skills, if you had a little less uh, fear of failure, if you became more problem solving than complaining, and we did more things about the things around us, think about just how much more awesome our world could be. I know you can do it. I know we can do it. So ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. Thank you.